adaptation measures and strategies can and should support and promote European efforts towards a sustainable agriculture as an important element of an EU Green Deal. The next slide, please. So the specific objective or targets of AgriAdapt project is, well, there are some specific goals and one is to improve the knowledge base for the development, the assessment and the monitoring of climate change vulnerability at farm level. Then we want to test sustainable measures and management approaches and practices on more or on at least 120 pilot farms. Another goal is to promote sustainable adaptation measures and to enhance the capacity to apply the knowledge in practice by demonstrating and disseminating actions for farmers, farmers associations, technical consultants, food standard organization, but also agricultural assurance or insurance companies. Of course, we want also to raise awareness and know-how of current farmers, but also for future farmers for sustainable adaptation options at farm level. And finally, of course, as an EU-funded project, we want to contribute to the development and the implementation of EU national and regional policies on climate change adaptation by transferring our results and best practice to and know how to political, to agricultural and food business stakeholders. On this slide, you can see the the, the starting point of AgriAdapt, of the AgriAdapt project, it's a map from yeah, 10 years ago from the European Commission. And what you see is uh, Europe divided in four different climate risk areas. And uh, the fundamental idea of our project was to have a project partner in every of these four European climate risk zones. And so we have now, we have a partner in Estonia for the Northern risk area. We have a partner in Germany for the Central European part, we have a partner in France um, for the Atlantic um, climate risk area, and finally a partner in Spain in the southern risk area. And all those four climate risk zones, there are similar effects on agriculture by climate change. So we have the four project partners in the four EU climate risk areas. The Project running time is about 44 months, but unfortunately we don't have 4 million uh, euros as a budget, but only a bit more than 2 million euros. So we are at the end of the project now. We only have six weeks and today we want to present some of the main results we have. And just a last overview on the project, what we have done so far. Just the next slide, please. So we have done in the beginning of the project some, some uh, we have brought together um, results from other projects and we have uh, created some expert groups and brought together and all, the, all this basic knowledge and sustainable adaptation to climate change and agriculture, you can find that in our baseline reports. And another main action in our project was to develop a common a common decision supporting tool. We call it the climate change check. So to analyze and to assess the vulnerability on farm level. Later on, Nicola will present you the, the basic idea and the methodology of this climate change check. Then every of this partner, of this four partner in the project has at least 30 pilot farms and they were, have, they have been assessed and uh, um, accompanied you over three years and we will present you those this results of this vulnerability assessments. And another outcome of the project are on farm level the, the adaptation action plans and um, these adaptation action plans were the base for uh, the general proposals per farming system we will present you today. And of course as, as, as I already said in the beginning um, we want to to distribute and to yeah to distribute our results and uh, from the project more to our stakeholders. So we will also present then what we have done uh, with the adaptation training pack, and uh, we will present you then the um, the adaptation web tool. Okay, this was a short overview on the live agriadapt project. 
and now we go into detail. So together with the four project partners, we have analyzed and advised more than 120 pilot firms on sustainable adaptation to climate change in the past three years. And the basis for the analysis of farm vulnerability was the development of the so-called climate change check for farms. Nicolas Metaillet from Solagre Institute in France will now present the methodology and also the results of this vulnerability assessments. So please, Nicolas, it's up to you. Thank you, Patrick. So we go on with the, the methodology we use uh, on our network of pilot farm in the four countries. So first, uh, to start with the, the same um, uh, context about climate uh, and climate change for the, the coming years, we just would like to, to share with you the, the situation. What is important for us is that uh, we have two, two different periods. The, the first period is uh, what is going on between 2020 and 2050. So I think you have all in mind this kind of graphics from IPCC with the, R, um, the RCP scenarios. So um, whatever the, the scenarios, uh, you can see that for this first period, the global warming will be more or less the, the same. And it's once we will go after 2050 to the end of the century, that we will have very diverse uh, direction, different climate pathway about uh, uh, the increase of temperature. So what we are doing in the Agriada project with the, the farmers is trying to, to make them aware about what we call the near future, what is going on until 2050. So there is, we are in a, in a world uh, in which climate change is um, getting impact in our agriculture. And uh, in the coming 30 years, uh, whatever the climate scenarios, we will uh, continue to, to have impact on uh, our uh, different products. So what is important for us when talking about a um, relation between plant and climate, uh, we have in mind four major weather events. When you've got high temperature or low temperature, uh, on the same way, if you have a water shortage, water deficit, or excess of water, then it means that you you are probably get impact on the different crops. Uh, the second thing is about the, the degree days. Uh, in a world with more temperature, in, it means that the, the development of the plant is also uh, changing. So you go to you can you you reach maturation. Uh, uh, more early than uh, in, a, in a previous climate we've, because now we've got more temperature. So it's also, um, so all these agronomic basics uh, are, um, are used to, to go back to the, to the farmers and make them understand uh, what are the current change and what will be the, the possible change in the near future. So first, uh, we we'll, um, we go on with um, some climate observation. So here you you've got uh, observation for the the north of France near Paris, east of Paris. You can have uh, on the on the first graphic uh, what are the the end of crop uh, condition. You have. Uh, uh, the number of days uh, with uh, hot temperatures, more than 25 degrees uh, during May and June. So when these kind of days occur, it means that you have a uh, shriveling on, uh, on, and loss of yield for, for wheat. And on the other axis, you have the rainfall, the, the, the rain, rainfall accumulation during the same period, May and June. And it has been shown since uh, a few years by different uh, crop institutes uh, in France or in other European countries 
that, uh, that the, the climate condition during May and June often explain most of the, the, the yield losses we, we now get uh, on farms. So here on, on this graphic, you have the, the, the results for number of hot, hot days and rainfall uh, at, the, at this period for France. Now for France, uh, you have the 30 last years and you can see 2003 and 2016, two opposite years with two different uh, weathers. 2003, it's a hot wave very, and few rainfall, so a lot of uh, hydric deficit, um, also thermal uh, uh, excess, so it's uh, one of the of the worst uh, yield we we had uh, in uh, in some place in France due to to this kind of uh, climate variables, and at the opposite, 2016, uh, it's the it's uh, only half of the of the yield was uh, was rich, so 50% of yield losses due to opposite um, climate stress. It was an excess of water, as you can see on the graphic, and um, and to a very low temperature at the end of the crop cycle. So at the end, it's, um, it has been a, a very, very big yield losses for, for farmers. So all the years are different. And with climate change, you can see that we can be in the same place impacted by very different uh, climate variables. So when uh, working with farmers about climate change, uh, uh, when looking at the very recent years, very often you can have uh, in the recent times diverse climatic hazards, could be drought, could be heat waves, intense frost, erosion, flooding, hail and whatever. Uh, it's quite easy now to, to have in mind uh, a very recent uh, impact due to these uh, climatic hazards. So it's quite easy to, to have a discussion with farmers now about this. And um, on the, at the same time, we try then to go to them with a very uh, long period of data. So there is a second graph that will appear on the slide and you will have the, um, the possibility. So on the right of the screen, you have the, the trend for, for the, uh, the average temperature for warm one place in France, but it's the same for all the places now. So uh, till the, the year 1980, we now are, we now uh, get each year uh, an annual, tem an average temperature that is above the, what we call the, the normal. So the very first thing we have to, to do with farmer is to make them understand with this long series that we are reaching some new trends for annual temperature, for rainfall, etc. So for a lot of climate variables, we can have this kind of representation uh, and it will continue in the near future. So it's not only uh, climate hazards are important and we, we also make them aware that uh, all the variables are moving around them. So this is very essential, is to make them uh, understand that uh, it's not only a question of weather, they are involved as um, an economic um, operator on the, the, the very recent time, but we have to make them uh, look at a very, very long period to have in mind this kind of, of trend. So the first uh, step with them, uh, you can see on the on the, the bottom of the, of the screen, you have the AgriAdapt roadmap for adaptation. So that is exactly what we have made with Pilot Farm. Try to to have this uh, learning process with them. So the two first step is to make them aware, to help them to to identify what is the vulnerability at uh, at the, the farm level. So what are the, the, main, the main climatic hazards and the impact they had in the past? Uh, and once it, it is clear for them, we go on to the near future and we try to, 
to to help them to identify solution to to fight against these trends uh, about climate but also the the, the the new climate protection so at the end of the process the idea is to have a clear overview about what to do in a short to, to long term period so now about uh, our methodology um, what is often a difficulty with farmer is that we are talking about very very uh, large information what is climate change in the world in, in their country and we try to go uh, as close as possible to to their place uh, to the to the farm location and to also have a, um, a good overview about um, the, the 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 risk the climate risk they can have at farm level we have experienced this kind of um, uh, methodology so first uh, so it consists in first uh, getting uh, a frequency of climate stress what we call exposure and to multiply this exposure to the impact of sensitivity which consists in a percentage of crop yield reduction so um, our vulnerability scoring uh, we have uh, tested in, in this project this project uh, means in the exposure multiplied by the impact so by this we can um, produce a vulnerability uh, you can go on to the next slide next slide so you will uh, so you've got the agreed vulnerability matrix so we got this scoring for both frequency and uh, impact we have tested it uh, in all the, the pilot farm and uh, by this we can show also the, the new context because uh, if the farm is uh, projected in a new climate uh, with the same uh, agronomic practices, same system, then uh, we can update the scoring vulnerability and show the farmer uh, what is the, the context for the near future. And the necessity to adapt. Okay, so for each of the pilot farm, we have um, used this methodology. So first, it's about crop yield. It's important to have in mind all the variability you can have uh, in one place. So for you have seen with the the results in France in the previous slide for the for France. So there's a, you can have until 50% of uh, yield variability for one crop. So it's important to have in mind what were the, the worst performance and to explain it also by climate impact. Okay, so we, we are using regional or local statistics to identify these uh, special years and to so you can discuss easily with farmers and try to have also the, the variation at farm level, minimum and maximum yield. Um, then we go on with climate data. So you have to use a lot of data. It's daily data for the last 30 years. And we also are using climate production for the 30 next years. Um, we have built a, a, a tool. So we are able to notify uh, a little bit more than 75 different indicators so automatically we can generate them at farm level and use this indicator to make the farmer aware of the, the changes at farm level so and then uh, through the interview about agronomic economic livestock and environment of the farm uh, we have the approach at farm level so we can put forward the, the current and coming uh, scoring uh, for vulnerability we have seen uh, just before. So for any of the products in this project, so for perennial crops, for arable crops or for um, animals, for, for cattle, we can imagine a lot of different agroclimatic agro indicators. Uh, what we call ACI. So these uh, indicators are very useful to, to, to make the farmer aware of the change. So for each of the, the place, we are running all the data in our tool 
Um, the next step is to to selection uh, is to select a few essays that um, will help the farmer to understand the situation and to engage him in a process of, for adaptation. So here is the network of pilot farm. As you can see, uh, it's quite diverse uh, situation. So um, a lot of production from dairy farms to beef, barnyards, orchards, tomatoes, etc. So uh, I'm in very different uh, situation regarding the their location. So the main farming system represented in the network, it's arable crops. So in the four countries in the project, you, you can get uh, arable crops and dairy milk uh, farm also. And then depending on, on of the countries, you can have tomato, orchard, vineyards, uh, beef, pork, or sheep farms. So all these fa pilot farms have been selected because the farmer were interested to to be in the project, uh, to be helped to identify the vulnerability and to have a, a, an action plan at the end of the project. So these farms are very diverse. Of course, they are representative of their situation, their location. Uh, but uh, also in behind the, the selection of farm, we have tried to get very diverse um, system. For example, the crop, uh, the crop um, system is not the same. Some are very specialized, others are, are quite di diversified. Uh, regarding the size of the farm, you can see also in the table uh, on the slides that uh, very, very different situation are in our network uh, of pilot farm. So it's the same about practic, uh, about the, the farming practices. Uh, most of the farms are conventional, but we also try to ensure a minimum of organic farming. So around 20 to 25 percent of our pilot farms are organic. So, so this is a very quickly a short overview of our arable crops pilot farm. So in the four countries, we have very diverse size. Uh, you can see that the minimum and maximum are quite uh, extreme. Uh, so very diverse situation. And uh, on this, the other graphics you will, uh, that will appear, you will see that the, um, the diversification of the farm. So on the left, it's the number of crops cultivated in these uh, arable pilot farms. So from, uh, for example, in, in Spain, you have about uh, five different crops, but uh, some of them only get three and uh, the most diversified get six. In France, another country, you can see that the average situation is about seven and the minimum is four to a maximum of 14. So very, very diverse situation. And uh, the second graphic on the right, it's about the genetic diversity. So how many varieties cultivated at farm level. And you can see also very diverse situation. So it was a, a great thing to, to test the methodology and to, to check different things. Uh, it's exactly the same situation for dairy milk farm, uh, very diverse size. Uh, same thing for the number of co and uh, also the milk production that will appear on the on the left. We have the uh, the average situation in each of the four countries with dairy cows, um, and also you can see that minimum and maximum uh, are often different from the median situation. And uh, on the left, on the right, sorry, so you get the. Um, the, it was the estimation from all the, the farmers about the losses of milk at farm level during heat waves. You can see that all the, in the four countries, farmers are concerned by uh, uh, current losses uh, of milk due to heat waves. 
So, um, one uh, illustration about uh, the different climate projection uh, we can use at farm level. So, here you've got uh, transects from very south of Europe to the very north. So, all, all the red points are, um, are used to build the, the coming graphic. So, it's uh, about uh, something very generic. It's the number of uh, the impact of heat waves for cereals. So, if you go on the left of the graphic, you have the situation of Spain. Uh, so, we've got one point in Castilla and Leon region. You can see on the, the bar on the very left, RP, it means recent past. It's the, the situation for the recent past for the number of its stress for cereals in the last 30 years of the model. So, the median appear in green, and you can see on the second bar, uh, which is called the NF for near future. It's the, the projection for the 30 coming years for the same indicator, same place. And you can see that the median is moving from around 40 days to 50 days in only uh, um, 30 years. So, and for each of the different uh, locations, you can see that we are very significant change are occurring in the near future. So, we can do this kind of uh, representation for a very, very wide range of uh, indicator. So, the second graphic, uh, as a last illustration on this, it's about dairy milk pilot farm. Heat stress is also a problem with uh, cattle and dairy cattle especially. And here we can see the evolution only on the, the average situation in the recent past and near future for Spain, France, South of France, Germany and Estonia. And you, we, you, you, you get there the comparison of the two period uh, for the number of days under uh, heat stress for cattle. And uh, in this e-stress, you can have a class two to ca class four of, um, of um, an increasing thermal stress and increasing impact for coal. So it's also one important thing for the near future. Okay, so now we are at the end of the sequence of, of this uh, pilot farm uh, vulnerability assessment. In all of the pilot farm, uh, we have we had this SWOT analysis. You have just a summary on the slide. So first, what we have tried to do is to detect what were the weaknesses looking at the climate, at the, the past climate and the consequences on the farm, uh, and also the strengths, because some farms already implemented farming practices that are helpful for, for vulnerability and the adaptation. So it's also an, an important thing to, to highlight. And then, uh, once the farmer are okay with the current vulnerability, we are uh, analyzing the um, coming weakness. Weakness, uh, sorry, Karina, you can go on, please. So we are looking at the coming opportunity, climate opportunities, uh, and also climate threats. So the adaptation plan we are working, we are going on with the farmer have to tackle uh, both climate weaknesses and climate threats. And uh, the next sequence will uh, be directly related to the adaptation measures and what can be proposed at farm level to, the, to, uh, to build an adaptation uh, strategy. Okay, Nicola, thank you very much for this overview on the methodology and for the for the results out of the vulnerability assessments. So far, I cannot see any questions in the chat. So I think we move on to the next uh, section in our webinar. It's about the general proposals, performing system. Um, yeah, for the three main farms, arable farm types, arable crops, livestock, and permanent crops, we have compiled, evaluated, and structured the results and findings from the adaptation action plans of the more than 120 pilot farms. And first, my colleague Sylvain Dublair from Solagro will give you an introduction and an overview. So the project partners then will present the results for the respective farm types. But 
firstly, Silva, to give you an introduction. Please, Silva. Thank you, Patrick. Hello, everybody. Uh, to start this sequence about adaptation measure, we just want to remind you uh, one thing about climate changes and uh, some methodic points to describe our adaptation measure. The first thing is about climate, climate change and uh, keep in mind that uh, climate change uh, covers uh, three different things. And uh, concerning agriculture, it's, it, it makes a great, a great difference. The, the three things are um, climate change are, first of all, trends, uh, modification of climate trends, like uh, hot temperature, or, uh, more precipitation or less precipitation. The second point uh, about climate change is the extreme events. And please note that some, in some, some situations, extreme events can be against the, the trends. And the last point uh, concerning climate change is the, the increase of the inter, interannual uh, variability of uh, climate uh, variable. And this last point is for sure the most important things to face for, uh, to have in mind for farmers for the next uh, let's say 30 years. So our, um, our adaptation measures are mainly uh, focusing this point, how to reduce the interannual uh, variability uh, consequences at, at farm level. Of course, without uh, uh, suppress the, the, the trends and the extreme events, but in the short term and for the next 20 years, the, the most important things for our farmer is to, to face this interannual variability. And next slide, please. So now some, just a, a couple of, of, uh, of uh, presentation about the, the, the methodology we, we adopt to, to define the adaptation measure at farm level. First of all, we try to, to decompose the, the, the vulnerability into uh, several components. Uh, as you can see uh, here, for, for example, for arable crops or arable farms, the, the vulnerability component uh, is divided into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, components. Um, a part of this component are under the, the control of the, of the farmer, and uh, another part are under the control of the policy of the, of the market. So, when we deal with, with the farmer about adaptation measure, we mainly we focus on crop system, variety, water dependency, and soil and farming practices. And of course, we try also to, to discuss about insurance, market, and policy. So we, we have this, this, the, this same approach, approach with other farms, farm style. So for, for dairy farm, we, we have a, the, the same representation. The vulnerability component is a bit different. Um, for dairy farm, we have uh, animal welfare, water dependency, herd management, and fodder system and concentrates under the responsibility of the farmer. And for the, the perennial crops and for the, the, the permanent crops, uh, we add something about winemaking, uh, variety, water dependency, and soil and farming practices, of course, and of course, uh, market and insurance still, still the same. So this is the way we, we discuss with the, with the farmer, uh, first of all, with, uh, uh, by decomposing the vulnerability in, in uh, several components. Uh, another point about the methodology we, we use uh, to deal with, the, to discuss with the farmer is to uh, to split the adaptation measure into into, into three level, uh, levels. The first one, uh, the efficiency level, deal with uh, uh, adaptation measure easy to, to to set up, and of course the objective is to uh, optimize the the current agricultural process. The second level of of measure, uh, substitution measure. Of course, it's something uh, more difficult to, to set up. It, it changes a little bit more the, the, the system or the agriculture practices. And basically, efficiency and substitution is the, the, the most important part of the discussion we have with the, with the farmer. And then, 
uh, we discuss about uh, more, let's say, advanced measure of modification measure to face climate changes, and this, this measure, the redesign measure, concerns uh, a more uh, uh, more global change at, at farm level, and it could move all the all the farm process. So, for the the next slide, we are going to present basically uh, uh, that uh, efficiency and the substitution measure and some advanced modification for each uh, farm type. Um, so through our work on the 126 pilot farms across Europe, we were able to summarize key adaptation measures per farming system. And over all the climate risk regions, um, the short and I mean, concerning arable farms, the short and midterm measures regarding the crop system, so the vulnerability component of crop system, focus on um, adapting um, the sowing date on a crop diversification and cultivation of mixed uh, crops. A main focus of all arable farms across Europe actually lies on um, the soil and farming practices and ensuring a more for fertile soil so that um, the soil can sto store more water. And this can be done, for example, by reducing the soil tillage and by improving the organic matter content and by having a maximal um, soil cover throughout the year. When looking at the, the crop varieties, the idea in all countries is of spreading the risk on the farm. So for example, through limiting the area sown by a single variety, by having a, a mix of varieties on the farm um, and, by, and by selecting the suitable varieties um, which can be used on, on the farm itself. And then, of course, water dependency also plays a major role with the increasing temperatures in, in all um, regions across Europe, um, especially in, in, the southern, in the southern regions. And here, the, the focus is mainly an efficient use of the water resources, um, which can be done by having um, more efficient irrigation systems um, in, the, in the farms that where irrigation takes place by substituting water loving crops um, for more uh, or by substituting water loving crops for by more drought tolerant crops. And then there are of course also um, more long term measures that can be um, uh, taken on, on the arable farms and in Europe this these are bigger management changes on the farms, for example, um, widening of the, the crop rotation on a farm, um, changes in the sowing technique, for example, or in the, in the technique of the soil management. So going, for example, from plowing and seeding to, to direct seeding on, um, on cover crops, or even bigger changes in the management system of a farm, for example, the conversion from um, conventional to organic farming. Um, this next slide um, shows an um, overview of selected short, uh, midterm, and also advanced modifications over the um, farm vulner vulnerability components and the climate risk regions. And the main adaptation measures of each of these components were the ones summarized in the in the previous slide. So this is just an overview to have seen more detail which measures could be um, realized by the farm in each of the climate risk regions. And the component in which the countries differ the most now for arable farming, for example, is um, in the water dependency, as the, the countries that are more to the south of Europe um, are already drier and hotter, and many of the farms there are already implementing irrigation, for example. So crop substitution and the efficiency of the irrigation systems is, um, is, uh, plays a major role in these countries, whereas in the northern countries, um, maximum soil cover and the improvement of the soil structure and fertility um, play more of a role rather than um, the, the irrigation, irrigation at the moment. So this was a brief overview of um, the measures that can be implemented in arable crops, um, and I will 
give to Ragna to talk about livestock farms. Thank you, Carolina. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I will say briefly something about um, the livestock production or animal production. And here on this slide, you can also see the five different five different uh, vulnerability components. Um, first of all, I have to say that um, most of them <coughs> related um, measures um, are kind of um, uh, related to grassland-based um, animals, but some of the measures can also apply to other animal species. So if we start with the um, first component uh, and see the measures there, they are mainly related to the different um, yeah, actions or plans related to adopting the, the calving period, for example, and there are also some measures related to, to feeding. <clears throat> and also something um, that is um, um, related to the, to the housing systems or, or the cooling or ventilation of the systems. Um, now, um, in case of um, animal production or in case of uh, grassland-based animal production, the, the main and most important uh, feed is, of course, grass and all the feed that is made out of grass. And therefore, a lot of uh, attention should be put, uh, especially on grassland management. Um, using different measures um, in relation to choosing um, yeah, different um, plants or different um, varieties that are suitable for this particular farm, or changing the, the grazing systems, or using the native seeds, for, exa for example, legumes um, in, the, in the grassland. <coughs> Uh, the next one uh, is kind of um, animal welfare, um, and here in those components, uh, animal health is not really mentioned, but we consider that um, we, uh, the animal health is uh, really closely related to animal welfare also. And uh, those are mainly, that is perhaps protecting the animals from direct impact. And, uh, related to reduce the, the risks from um, heat stress. So providing different cooling systems and change. Now, if we go further um, to the water, then the water is, um, or the water management is uh, also in case of animals related um, to um, feed production. And it's also related to when we are using water for cooling the animals. Um, and the last one is um, kind of, um, yeah, the advanced modifications um, are related to those um, bigger changes that uh, need to be done, uh, whether it's related to the new barn or completely bigger changes in the, in the feed production systems. And if we are going to the uh, next slide, and it's also similar to the crop production, it gives them overview um, of the, the distribution of the measures by climate risk regions and uh, by farm vulnerability components. I'm not, of course, I'm not going to introduce all of the measures listed here, but say perhaps uh, rather generally something about each vulnerability component. So the first one in the first column, there's um, other system. And the measures are mainly related to the grasslands, as I mentioned already, and recommend to, for example, increase the diversity of the plants um, and uh, varieties, and uh, also increase the feed storage capacity. <coughs> um, the next one is uh, herd management. It's more about technical solutions and, and planning, uh, for example, calving time or adjusting um, feeling management um, according to the needs. Um, animal welfare measures um, are related mainly to avoid heat stress, as I mentioned. And also the next uh, farm vulnerability component, which is uh, water dependent, is in many cases related to using water to cool the animals, <clears throat> but also choosing the right crops to grow. And the last column 
refers to the long-term measures and that um, perhaps requ require more planning and time and or investments to be in implemented in the form. Um, yeah, for example, this special one in the, in the southern climate risk region in the right corner, uh, which is called key line design. This is um, kind of uh, yeah, special holistic grassland management, and not, not only grassland management, but the landscape management. It's mostly about control of water and the improvement um, of soils, and it's practiced mainly in permanent the grasslands in very dry areas. Um, yeah, that's what I wanted to say, and I guess we can continue with um, permanent crops. Okay, but uh, here's Patrick from Lake Constance Foundation. Um, just an announcement, we have uh, some first questions here in the chat and we will answer them at the end of this section. So please feel free just to go and ask questions by the chat and then in the end of this section, we will try to answer them. Okay, then I hand over to Vanessa. She will refer on uh, permanent crops. Thank you, Patrick. Hello, everybody. Well, regarding uh, permanent crops, as for the other uh, uh, agrarian systems, we, we have focus in different vulnerability components. And regarding field, what we recommend is to leaf and uh, the leaf and grape management. That means that if we, we have less leaves and less branches, then we will have less loses water by evapotranspiration. We recommend to adapt pruning since uh, uh, it's, it's the same uh, thing. We will have less evapotranspiration. And uh, we focus too in a high quality against the high yields because uh, uh, we, we think we should increase competitiveness by processing and not just producing, and then a yield will be a secondary aspect when, uh, when the quality is up front. Uh, regarding farm uh, measures, we recommend to focus on traditional varieties since we know they are better adapted, they have more stable yields even under critical conditions, and we know there is an increasing interest, interest for these varieties. And yes, uh, even uh, it's important to focus on new varieties from warmer climates, because uh, we, we have to make research on that. And, uh, and then it's interesting too to adapt the wine making techniques, techniques since, uh, well, with less or more honest, <laughs> we all know that uh, we can uh, correct the most uh, if it's loaded with sugar. Regarding uh, water dependency, sorry, soil farming practices, is uh, as arable crops, the, the, the most important is to, to keep the maximum soil cover uh in order to to keep soil um uh, with a better structure and then we will ensure more water uh, into the soil and uh, less erosion and to improve organic matter content and regarding water dependency as uh, in the rest of uh, of uh, agrarian systems we need to increase the irrigation efficiency materials in some cases, we may need some deficit irrigation, and for instance, this in the Mediterranean region will be something very important because yields won't be won't be feasible anymore in some uh, uh, farms if they don't they don't have the possibility to make some deficit irrigations, and of course to improve the the resource uh, management, since as you know, for instance, in wineries uh, we use a lot of water. Uh, regarding advanced modifications. Uh, well, we have focus on vine format since there are many possibilities, as you may know. Uh, well, the traditional model, for instance, vineyards in base, is the most adapted to climate change and is the most resistant to higher temperatures. But when the variety needs a more intense farming methods, and vineyards are planted in a spalier, for instance, the farmers must try to control the, the train of the vineyards, depending on the variety selected, and depending on the local cl climate conditions. So they should focus on different uh, variabilities such as orientation of the vineyards and the altitudes of the vineyards. And then another measure for the long term, uh, long term is uh, the new locations of some crops. Uh, yes, we know that uh, this is not feasible for many farmers, but we know to some uh, wineries, for instance, that are already buying fields in cooler areas. 
or in uh, higher uh, altitudes or latitudes. And last but not least is the is the, um, the modification of the videos since uh, uh, in this climate change scenario it will be needed more more flexibility on variety selection and yields a load and it will be a need uh, in this, this climate change scenario. Next slide, please. And in the next slide we we have um, uh, well. We, as in the previous uh, radian systems, we have uh, summarized the measures in the different climate risk regions, and it's uh, more or less the same as before. As uh, you can you can see that at field level in almost all, all the regions, the leaf and grape management is important, and the modification of pruning too. And for instance, in the continental region, is a different measure that is not applied in the rest uh, in the other regions, as it, it is the adaptation of the site to ensure the outflow of cold air and then uh, at farm level uh, well varieties uh, trying new varieties from warmer climates and so on is a, a good change for to adapt to climate change and even in the northern region is the use of uh, services for pest monitoring or the adaptation of the phenological practices or, or, and so on in in soil uh in the soil component and farming practices is almost the same in all the regions uh, we, we focus and we think it's very important to increase the organic matter in the soil and to keep the soil covered the maximum uh, period of time possi of possible and regarding water of course uh, efficiency in irrigation and regarding advanced modifications some things are, are some things are different, like for instance in the continental region, the, they need to protect uh, against hail, so they use hail nets, but this, uh, this, this uh, measure is not very effective, for instance, in the Mediterranean region, since hail is not um, a very extreme event and uh, the, the cost efficiency wouldn't be feasible in the Mediterranean region, and more or less that's, that's it. Thanks. Thank you so much, Vanessa. So thank you all for this overview on the general proposals. Now, Silva, you want you will give us a, a wrap up of uh, of the aggregate project and the general proposals per farming system. Silva, please. Uh, Patrick, before there is a, a sequence on the the reason not to implement measure. I think it's a sequence under the control of uh, Carolina. Carolina. Patrick? Okay. Yes, sorry? Yes, I, I, I didn't prepare. Oh, okay, this, sorry. But, okay. <laughs> okay. So, I have that on my list. Um, uh, throughout our work with the, with the 126 pilot farms, we also, I mean, we, we have been um, working with the farms for the past three years and um, during the farm visits that we, that we made, I think, um, four or altogether four or five farm visits where we also proposed some adaptation measures. Um, we, we also um, asked the farmers, I mean, there were always some, some adaptation measures that the farmers could not um, uh, or said they, they couldn't implement. And we, we made a list of reasons um, why these, uh, the farmers could not um, implement certain measures and we just wanted to give a brief overview of this um, here. So, um, I mean, there were always very specific reasons for the for the different farms and farming systems, but um, they were mainly, um, you could group them under five um, different aspects. Um, so, for one, there are the cultivation aspects. Uh, so, uh, in some farms, well, it depends, for example, for, for dairy farms, um, Concerning the the, the grassland, um, I mean, some aspects are the the soil. Uh, um, some some um, species of grass can only be be sown, for example, in the grassland if the soil has a specific specific quality. And of course, if this farm doesn't have uh, this soil type, um, the farm is not able to to sow, um, for example, tall fescue, which is more drought tolerant than there are other cultivation aspects, for example, a reduced soil management, um, which would um, increase this, 
the water storing capacity of the soils. Um, this uh, couldn't be um, implemented by some farms because it would have be a less eff effective herb management, for example, as mainly in organic farmers. Then there's the whole thing of the, the cover, the green covers in, in permanent crop uh, farms, which is more difficult to implement in southern regions because, of course, for establishing green or cover crops, um, water is necessary. So there were some cultivation aspects um, on the different farms, why measures couldn't be implemented. Then, of course, there are financial uh, aspects for not implementing certain measures, um, for example, investments in in uh, in new buildings for um, for storing uh, investment in new storing capacities, for example, if more um, if the crop rotation um, gets wider and um, new locations for permanent crops have to be found and and so on, then there is um, also external regulations which um, um, which could be a problem for for farmers, for example. Um, shading trees uh, near barns um, in Germany, for example, it's not um, always allowed um, because of the of the hygienic regulations regarding, for example, um, uh, pork uh, barns. Uh, then there are the uncertainties in weather as well. Um, for um, as a as a reason for not implementing measures, for example, ch changing of the seeding times. Um, under sowing can only be um, done if there is enough water um, present in that year. And then for some farmers, um, a reason was also that for them, they thought there would not be a benefit for the farm when if they implement a certain measure. Uh, for example, introduction of legumes um, or the cultivation of meslins. I mean, this is a benefit for, uh, maybe for the soil structure, but the farmer um, didn't see it as a benefit for, for his or her farm. So this is just a, an overview, I mean, <clears throat> of, um, of points why uh, measures could not be implemented and also maybe um, interesting to um, then take into consideration when um, um, when these measures, when we want to promote these measures, um, for example, on EU, EU or national level. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Carolina. But now it, uh, it's up to you, Silva. Thank you, Please. Patrick. Then for the, the conclusion of this uh, sequence, we want to, to keep it very simple and uh, present uh, key, uh, for a key, key adaptation measure without regrets and um, as you know the, with the, the, the example, uh, the previous example, uh, the, the, the key measure are, are this one. The first one is of course diversification of the, of the, of the systems. It could be a diversification at field, at, field, at field scale, it could be diversification at farm scale, it could be also diversification at territory, territorial scale. Uh, the other uh, important uh, measure concerns uh, soil, uh, soil conservation and uh, implement uh, practices and a uh, way to manage soil in, in good shape, in good condition. Of course, uh, organic matter is the key indicator in this, uh, in this, uh, for this uh, purpose and, and soil cover. The, the third one concerning uh, concern, uh, specifically uh, animals and of course is the, the, the livestock building. Here we, we point out the, 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 the increase of the frequency of uh, heat waves. And the last point concerning extensification of the, of the system in, in, in several crops or in, in, in dairy co system or in perennial crops. So this is uh, for us is uh, both a, a, a message, uh, a clear message and a simple message and uh, of course we want to point out uh, no regrets adaptation measure and to, to, an, to answer to one of the questions already raised, uh, for example organic farming uh, is something Korean with diversification, 
and loam crop rotation, extensification, and for a, a, a part of the organic farming, soil conservation. So that's why we point out organic farming as a possible good answer to, to climate change. And please keep in mind that for the next 20 years, the, the, the most important fact to, to, to face is this increase of um, interannual variability for, for farmers and for agriculture. So these key adaptation measures are uh, mainly designed to face this uh, increase of uh, interannual variability. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvain. And there's another question um, referring to the to a tool, if it will if it will be available, and in which way. Perhaps I give this uh, question back to our French colleagues, or to Nicolas, or to Sylvain. What about the tool? And okay, so qu the question about the tool. So the the AgriAdapt web tool for adaptation that will be presented in the next sequence. Uh, you will have an overview of it, and uh, it, it will be online in the coming two weeks. So we'll send you the direct link to to it. Uh, and of course, it's a, a, a free tool for any agricultural stakeholder in, interested in the question of the climate adaptation. Um, and may I add, we will also um, look on this, but we also we have uh, created a manual where we are summarizing our, our main results of the project and the, the methodology and so on, which is also available on our website. So you can download that there. I can add that the manual is even better than the report. <laughs> okay, so there are no more questions at the moment, then we go on to the next section. Um, yes, as I already mentioned uh, in the beginning, one of our specific project targets is to raise awareness and know-how of current farmers and future farmers for this issue, for sustainable adaptation options at farm level, or in other words, we try, we want to contribute to a higher adaptation competence of current and future farmers in Europe. And to achieve this target, we have implemented two main project actions. One is the development and the dissemination of the adaptation training pack. And the other one is the development of the AgriAdapt web tool. And we will now present you both. And we start with the adaptation training pack. And this will be presented by Vanessa from Madrid. Vanessa, it's your floor. Thank you, Patrick. Well, regarding the, the adaptation and training pack, uh, uh, there are different contents on it, and uh, um, you can you can find uh, in the contents that we, we have uh, include. You can sorry, this, you can find the training pack into the document section of our website, and once you get into there, you will find uh, different PowerPoints presentations, and we have. Uh, done different uh, size uh, of the presentations for every content. I mean, uh, we have done one PowerPoint for the project and one PDF uh, uh, document, and you can find it in a short, medium, and long, large uh, size. So you will find uh, information about the project, about the uh, European agrarian sector vulnerability to climate change in uh, European contents, but even uh, one presentation for every of the four climate risk regions we have been working at. You will find a presentation too for the project methodology and a PDF to, to use it. And you will find too the sustainable adaptation measures description and the relationships between uh, climate change, adaptation and other uh, issues as environment or economics or market opportunities and so on. And um, even the, the some, you will find some PowerPoints on different study cases on pilot farms. Uh, we have done at least two for every climate risk region, and you can find there two some videos and, and documents. And we have uh, developed two, a few posters for training sessions where you can find uh, empty information and posters with the, the, the answers to use in, in your lessons. Next slide, please. 
So is this training impact useful for you? Yes, I guess our target public or our, our agrarian structures, uh, but even training entities or universities or capacity building structures and uh, even agrarian insurance companies and uh, agri food labels and standards and in general, uh, everyone who is interested to learn more about adaptation to climate change. So, so next slide, please. So, all this information is uh, has got a format uh, uh, in the Creative Commons Attribution by and Sarah Like license, and this means that that all this work can be shared, used, and even modified if you if you want to. We just ask you to please um, um, uh, say about uh, the source. I mean that this this information comes from the Life Agria that project, but it's all for free. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. So this is the train adaptation training pack. So you can download it and, and use it. Feel free. And we go on now to the AgriAdapt web tool that will be presented by Nicola from Solagro. Um, yeah, he will give you more details on what you can expect in the next two weeks. Please, Nicola. Thank you, Patrick. So we, we go on with the coming uh, AWA, AgriAdapt Web Tool for Adaptation. So the idea was to valorize all the work we did with Pilot Farm. So we had a very specific work during three years with uh, farmers. Um, from all of this, we tried to build this platform, this web platform, uh, in three different modules. We'll uh, have an overview of each of the three modules and the idea is to to be able for any agricultural state or stakeholder in, interested in this question to 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 follow the um, the learning process i presented in the previous um, sequence so karina you can go on so um, the first module module one in the available in this web tool it's a, a quiz, a farm vulnerability and adaptation quiz, uh, which is uh, di divided in about 30 different questions in three main uh, thematics. So 10 questions about climate change, 10 questions uh, about impact of climate change, and 10 que questions about the adaptation at farm level. So the idea is to to improve the the knowledge and to to go deeper in detail for topics that are interest uh, the the user. So the the four partners have created a, a specific quiz for each of the four climate risk zones. So. One, one quiz for, for France, one quiz for Germany, one quiz for Spain, and one quiz for Estonia. So the, these four quiz are available in English as well as in the language of the country uh, of the partner who, re, who built the, who was responsible of the, of the quiz. And we will go on with the, the next slide on one example, so that's uh, a generic questions. For example, how long is the minimum period to talk about climate? So for each question, you will have four different answers available. The user have to select one of the four. You can have more than one good right answer per, per question. And when the user click on uh, one of the, the answer, the correct uh, answers or answer appear. You've got uh, an explanation, uh, a short explanation about um, why it is the, the correct question. And you have a learn more category uh, at the back of the screen. So it will open a, a new window where you can have a lot of uh, new uh, things to, to, to learn more about um, the question and to have also uh, web links to different platform or videos, media, that can help you to understand uh, the, these specific topics. So 30 different questions. At the end of the 30 different questions, you have the, 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 the number of right answer for the three sub thematics, climate change, impacts, uh, agricultural impacts, and uh, adaptation. 
and uh, you can restart it at any time. Uh, you can so get it in English or in the language of each of the of the of the partner. So it's the very first thing to do to have a minimum knowledge of uh, all these three sub thematics, and then uh, the user are okay with it. With this, they can go on to the second module. So the second module, Karina will go to the next slide. So the second module, it's about the, the data. So you will have data for yield or climate, climate observation or climate projection for different uh, grid points around Europe. So the, um, it's always uh, important for farmers to get illustration with data. So that's the objective of this second module. So here is the, the situation of the current uh, orange grid point available for, for the users. And in, uh, in 15 days, uh, we'll get more. So around third, um, 300 different grid points available in the different uh, member states in Europe. So you will get uh, the possibility then to, to get data for each of these orange grid points. So Karina, uh, so when you click on one of these uh, grid points, you, you can see at the top of the slide, you've got three different sections. The first one is dealing with yield compilation. The second one is dealing with climate observation. And the last one is giving you uh, data and graphics for climate projection. So first about the yield compilation, as we said it at the beginning of the webinar, uh, climate impact are often um, are offering low yield. So with this uh, yield compilation from year 2000 to 2017, you can have an overview of the current variability. So depending on statistics we found, you can have local or more general uh, yield compilation, but uh, you're free to, to do the same with more recent or local data if you get it. So the idea is to have the minimum average and uh, maximum performance for a, a set of about 14 different crops. So with the red color, you can have an eye of the, of the low uh, performances and try to identify uh, what were the, the climate hazards uh, explaining this low yield. So transition to the, to the next uh, section, it's dealing about climate observation. So we've tried to, through different climate variables to describe the current uh, climate of each of the grid, point, grid points. So first you have uh, on, the, um, on, uh, the, on the slide in front of you, you have the average temperature. Uh, the, red, uh, the red point uh, show the annual average temperature and then you can have the these, uh, annual average temperature per season, winter, spring, summer, fall, etc. So, so you've got the, the different, uh, the results for the last 40, uh, 40 years. Then you got the same with precipitation, hydric deficit, frozen number of frozen day per, per years or estimate day per, per years. So with all these climate variable, you can have a description of the, uh, the, the current state of the climate. And the last, uh, Subthematic of uh, of this module two, it's dealing about climate projection. So we've got uh, one more time a lot of data to offer the user. So first you've got uh, some generalities. So here you've got ten different graphics showing the trends for different for different generic uh, description of the new climate. So you will have the for example the annual average rainfall annual average evapotranspiration, annual average number of frozen days, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, you can see on the, on the screen, so you've got a, 
uh, so on the left of, of the graphic, the recent pass of the model, then you've got a gray bar in the middle, and it's the separation with the near future, so the 30 coming uh, um, years for, of the climate production. So by comparison, you can see the differences in the average, minimum or maximum uh, that uh, appear comparing situation of recent past to the near future one. So you have these 10 first generic indicators and then we try to valorize the work we did with Pilot Farm with specific agronomic indicators. So you've got a, a set of uh, about uh, 9 or 10 different indicators for arable crops showing uh, the, the climate impact for cereals, for summer crops, for um, you can have also um, uh, rapeseed, etc. So we had a selection of diverse indicators, so users can find uh, interesting um, figures for um, for their situation. You will then add three different uh, graphics for fodder. It's about uh, the um, the, for example, so it's not uh, there's no specific uh, slide on it, but uh, you can see the section with fodder. So you will have devoted uh, indicator. You will have also specific indicator for animals. As we explain, there is a, a, a real challenge for managing thermal stress for cattle. You can also have a new adaptation to be imagined. In buildings, buildings that are for um, uh, cooling or that are eating. Uh, and uh, finally, the last section, it's about uh, vineyards and fruits. So you will find there four different indicators uh, devoted to these specific perennial crops and um, the specific indicators. So that's for module two. So here it's the question of data, yield compilation, climate observation, and about 10, 20 different uh, indicators specific to uh, the four different sub-thematics. So now uh, the, the last section, the last module for this uh, AWA uh, web tool, so it's devoted about sustainable adaptation measure. So here the idea is to offer the user a compilation of adaptation measure for the three different farming system in our network of pilot farm. So our rubber crops, livestock, and also perennial crops. So these sustainable adaptation measures are also um, differentiated by climate risk zones. So you can, you will see in the next slide, so you have um, the possibility first at the very top of the screen to select cereal crops, animals or fruits and vineyards. Then the, you will have, you got in the middle, for example, for several crops, you will have the vulnerability component presented in the previous section. So crop system, varieties, soil and farming practices, or water dependency. So for these four different um, vulnerability components, you can then select one of the four climate risk zones. It's a filter. Uh, so you select the, the appropriate climate risk zone and then the measures selected for varieties and cereal crops for the southern climate risk zone appear with a color code. So from the, the red to the orange and then green. So it means short, mid or long term measures. So we respect the same classification uh, we presented you before. So uh, progressivity in the easy things to uh, optimize current system to very going to very different uh, farming system. And for each of these climate uh, adaptation measure, you can have a dedicated, uh, dedicated information. So here you've got one example. Uh, so for each of the measure available, you click on it and you have uh, um, a recall of the all the information, so the weather event addressed by this uh, climate adaptation measure, what is the farming system involved, what is the description, the short description of the measures, and on the right of the screen, 
you can have um, all the sustainability components. So we tried to uh, to identify if by this the implementation of this measure you can have a negative, positive, or neutral impact on GHG emission, air quality, soil, water, biodiversity, animal welfare, the economic of the farm. Does it uh, mean uh, a new investment or um, so maybe you can save money uh, or whatever? Uh, social and also technical feasibility if it's difficult or not to, to implement. So by this um, uh, general presentation, you can also see what are the, the co-benefits to, to implement uh, or not this kind of uh, adaptation measures. So that's it um, for the overview of this uh, coming web tool. So we tried to build it uh, to respect the different learning process we show you from vulnerability unknown to a better understanding of what is vulnerability to get uh, first ideas about what could be adaptation at the at the farm scale and to the very last step which is to have uh, an adaptation measure um, very robust with um, uh, plenty action identified and uh, organized analyzed so you know what are the costs and what will be the the things to implement uh, in, a, in a pathway for adaptation at farm level. So this uh, platform will be available, uh, let's say, end of March, and we will go back to you through email uh, as soon as it is uh, launched online. Okay, thank you very much, Nicola, for presenting the web tool and uh, to Vanessa too, for presenting the, the adaptation training pack. So um, we have another questions referring to uh, the adaptation measures. It comes from Mara. Um, she would like to hear more about the strategies for crop diversification in general being adopted or at least investigated and in the opinion of the presenters, adopting crops from other parts of the planet would be a good direction for Europe or should European develop their own adapted crops through genetic selection or both strategies? So who wants to ask to answer to this question about um, crop diversification in general? So we can we can say something about about that, uh, Patrick from from Solagro. Um, of course, the idea is, is to increase the the, the, the diversity at, at farm level or at field level, and uh, the, the current the, the the current variety is uh, most of the time uh, okay for for to, to to play the role of, of diversification. The, the, the key uh, message, of course, is to, to, to multiply the number of IT uh, sown by, uh, by on the farm. And uh, to, to go further, of course, it could be a good idea for uh, not at, at worldwide uh, scale, but at, at European scale, for example, it could be a good idea for a farmer uh, in the north part of, uh, of, of Europe to, 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 to see what kind of variety is used in the middle part of Europe and for the south part of Europe to, to, to have a look on the variety uh, sown in, the, in North Africa, for example. But it's, it's not a question of, of planet uh, scale. At least uh, in, in European, we have also enough variety to, to diversify. And of course, the, an, another action to, to create new variety uh, through uh, genetic, it's one of the options. The other option is to to uh, redevelop or, uh, or, uh, uh, or uh, redefine a local, what we call local variety. Uh, most of the time, more adapt to climate uh, to, to local climate, and see if uh, in, in the again for the for the north or, or, of Europe, for example, see the the uh, the local variety in the in the middle part of Europe could be a, a good one for the for the future. Thank you, Silva. Um, 
Okay, so now we we want to to open the webinar for for contributions from our participants. So if you have questions, you can still use the chat function, but you can also open up now your microphone and uh, ask your question. But then don't forget to mute it again. Thank you. So are there questions now from our participants? Sorry, Patrick. Could I yes, ask? I would like to add uh, some information regarding yes, the please. vaccine. Uh, is that uh, we have realized in Spain, working with our pilot farms and so on, then that some of the varieties in Spain are not required even. I mean, we have found that the, the farmers use different varieties that are not typified and we don't know how is the genetic variability of those uh, varieties of vineyards, for instance. And we think there is a lot of research uh, work to do on that, to, to, to see how different varieties uh, can uh, uh, work depending on the different patterns and the different climate conditions and so on. And that's an important research work to do, at least uh, in Spain. And even we, uh, yes, as, is, as Sylvain said, uh, we know that we could try to to prove or make proofs with um, with uh, other varieties coming from other warmer areas, since our climate is going to be similar to to warmer areas. So that's uh, that's very interesting too. Thank you. Patrick. Okay. Thank you, Vanessa. So, are there some questions? I don't see any questions in the chat function. Um, all the mics are mute. And we have already reached our time. We wanted to finish the webinar, so I think it's, uh, it's okay when we finish now our webinar. We put together again the key components for sustainable adaptation as a, also a general result from our uh, AgriAdapt project. You find this also in our manual and the eight key components we have identified so that are really kill, that are really uh, relevant also across the different regions in Europe uh, are the soil management. We think that living soils with a high amount of organic matter can absorb and store water and this is a very crucial component for an adaptation in the future for European agriculture. The nutrient management is also very uh, important and it's not only about uh, more um, um, nutrients, but it's it's better to combine organic matter, the, nutri the nutritional needs, the soil biota and structure, and to bring them together to an integrated nutrition management. Water is key, this is clear, but it's not only about irrigation, but also um, um, farmers will have to find a good combination of techniques to reduce water needs, to improve their water and storage capacities in soils, and also um, try to find ways to, for, to, to improve their water use efficiency. Pest management, I think, not only from terms of adaptation, but also for, for biodiversity, uh, a stronger focus on the integrated pest management is rank recommended from our side. Um, for that, or with a better integrated pest management, we also, we, everybody can reduce the chemical pesticides and avoid more resistance and avoid the decrease of the beneficial fauna. Another key component is the income and profit. So we found out also in the discussions uh, with our pilot farmers that most of the adaptation measures um, lead to a better yield and to a better profit in the end. Perhaps in the beginning, the production costs will be higher or they will increase, but um, adaptation also leads then to a more stable yield and in the end to a better economic situation of the firm. And sometimes uh, adaptation strategies and measures are not sufficient regarding a risk management, so an insurance can be an option to uh, to to support this uh, risk management on a farm. And as we have heard from from Ragna, animal welfare is also an important uh, key component for sustainable adaptation. So it's uh, really important to reduce the thermal stress um, in livestock um, because if you have thermal stress, this is always related to a uh, decrease of production and animal health. 
and biodiversity in the end is uh, what we found out is, is really a cross-section element to all other elements I've just uh, talked about. So this is really also key to maintain the biodiversity on the farm in a good uh, in a good shape. So I think it's now time to close the webinar, and I want to do this with uh, just again presenting you our website. It's www.agriadapt.eu and there you can find uh, most of our results and outcomes of the project. So first of all, as we have already mentioned, uh, even better than a report is the AgriAdapt manual. I think we can see it on the next slide. Um, it's uh, We have put together there also again the description of the methodology, the climate change check and the outcomes of the vulnerability assessments, but also uh, very interesting case studies from our, uh, from our, uh, from some of our pilot farms across Europe and also our conclusions. Vanessa also uh, described the training pack and you know now you can download it and use it for free. And we have some more outputs on our um, website soon, end of March. So in two weeks, we will present you then the AgriAdept web tool. You know now everything about it by Nicola. And we have some more results there. The next slide, please. Yes, we have also produced uh, some videos with direct practical insights from our pilot farms, but also from, from uh, agricultural experts in the different countries. I think it's uh, very interesting, or it could be very interesting for you to to um, watch these videos, they have all English subtitles. And uh, it's also worth to check regularly our website because everything we do, all the, um, the events we have done, the workshops and the publications, we present them in our new sections on the website. So it's really worth to go there and to, um, to get the results. Yes, so in the name of my colleagues, and project partners from Estonia, from Spain, and from France. I would like to thank you again very much for attending our webinar, and uh, thank you again for your questions and for your contributions.